Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory Glory to you, o Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty, and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, You did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. When my children were much younger, They used to love watching the Harry Potter movies. Actually, they still do love watching the (laughs) Harry Potter movies. It's a harmless story of a boy named Harry Potter who enters into a world of witches and wizards with all the curious people and even more curious creatures and magical items that he encounters along the way. And of all the strange items that he acquires, My favorite magical item is one that Harry received one Christmas. It was the gift of a special cloak in which, when he would put it on, makes the wearer invisible. Now, it's a useful item to have when you're trying to solve mysteries uh, around the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. And Harry would put this cloak over his shoulders, and poof, he disappeared. Well, it seems like a pretty clever trick to become invisible. But it's really not much of a trick at all. Just ask the king in the parable that Jesus told for today. Now, maybe this parable should be called the parable of the invisible man, because no one in the story seems to remember seeing the king when they see him. He has become invisible to those he encounters. Well, this gospel story we have before us is called a parable of judgment in which the Savior comes in glory with all his angels and he sits upon his throne and he gathers all the nations of the world before him and then he will separate all the people. He will separate the people into two groups, one on his right and one on his left. One are the sheep and one are the goats. The sheep will go on his right hand, which is... Jesus' good side. And on the left hand will go the goats, which we will soon learn is not so good. And then the Savior King, upon his throne, calls upon the sheep to enter into the kingdom of God. For he says that he came to them and they cared for him. 
And the sheep respond with surprise, for they did not remember seeing him. He has, was somehow invisible to them, at least as a king. And then the Savior turns to those on his left, and he pronounces harsh judgment. You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I came to you, and you did not or could not see me. And the goats act just as surprised as the sheep. When did we see you, they ask. He was invisible to them, just as he was to the first group. No one, it seems, can see the king when he comes. Everyone is surprised whether they are sheep people or goat people, whether they cared for the least among us or whether they could not see the king or not. But why were they surprised? Have you ever wondered that? Why were both of these groups surprised? I think that the sheep and the goats could not see him for very, very different reasons. Let's take the goat, uh, the, the goat people first. They claim not to have seen the king when he came to them, and if they did see him, of course they would have responded with a hearty welcome. The fact that they did not see him in the poor and the needy is really no surprise at all, since they don't even see the poor and needy in the first place because they have become invisible to them. Just to ask anyone who has been in this circumstance. People do not see them because they do not want to see them. For those who are in prison or in the hospital or in the nursing home, well, that's easy, out of sight, out of mind. And for those other ones, the ones who sit along street corners or with a sign asking for food or for a job, well, it's easy enough to turn a blind eye to them and poof, they disappear. Or the commercial that comes on the television, talking about feeding starving people somewhere in the world. Well, with a click of a button, poof, they vanish. Or the stranger comes to visit at the church, and they don't look like us, and they don't talk like us, and they don't love the same people that we love, or, and we ignore them at worship or in the fellowship hall for coffee, and poof, they vanish. The goat people did not see the king, not because he was invisible, but because the poor and the needy and the stranger are invisible. And, there, and so there is no real surprise as to why they didn't see Jesus. They didn't want to see Jesus. Now the sheep people, that's another story altogether. They didn't see the poor and the hungry and the stranger either. No, when they encounter someone in need, they didn't see the need, they saw the person. They saw the person behind it. They did not see the hunger or the thirst or the nakedness or the illness. They saw the people as extended family, just as Jesus saw them. Remember Jesus' words? Just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. The sheep people saw the needy as family members in need. They saw the people, not the problems, and that made all the difference in their vision. They weren't looking for kings to come their way either, but if the king would have come, I don't think they would have treated them any differently than they already were. Too easy is it for us to see the problems and not the people. Too often the problems become so big that the people become invisible to us, and so are forgotten. Too many hungry people, too many people experiencing homelessness, too many sick people, too many strangers, too many people without clean water, too many people in prison. And so we say it is too much for us, and we turn a blind eye, and the problems remain, but the people become invisible. And before we know it, we have become goat people, soon to be unpleasantly surprised goat people. Jesus' parable is not so much a prediction of the future as it is a call to change our vision. If we look for the people and not the problems, then we will see the invisible king. 
if we refocus our blind eyes to those in need around us, we will see the invisible king. If we see our family in the faces of the hungry and the homeless and the sick and the shut-in and the naked and the prisoner and the migrant, we will see Jesus. For we will have lived our lives as though we have already been saved by the love and grace and mercy of God and now offer it freely to others who are our family, our brothers and sisters. And one day, when we open our eyes and see the Savior King, he will say to us, Come, you that are blessed, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Amen.